So our app component is now getting real useful data in it. When it's first rendered, it does a search for surfboards and it gets it gets a response back on this.state. So we're now really ready to do some heavy lifting on the three components that are going to display that data. The video detail, the list, and the list item. In this section, we're going to focus on the list and the list item and put, putting those components together. So let's start with the parent of the two, the video list. So this component here doesn't really have any need for state. It doesn't record any user interaction and it doesn't re-render itself in any fashion. So we can really just make it a plain functional component. Let's get to it. At the top, we'll import react from react. Then we'll define our function. Const video list is a fat arrow function. And for right now, we'll just have it return a UL because it's going to be a list of different videos. So the list is a pretty visual component, so let's start thinking about adding some class names to get some styling in here at the same time. I've already included Bootstrap into this project in the index.html file. You'll see it on here as well. Your, your, your copy will have it in here as well. And it's currently using the v4 version, the latest, of Bootstrap. So we can make use of a lot of built-in class names to get some pretty reasonable styling on here. So we'll add a class to the UL. Adding a class is very similar to adding a class, uh, you know, a CSS class on normal HTML. The only difference is that instead of using the class keyword, we use a slightly different one. We use class name. We use class name instead of class just because if we used class, there would be a lot of naming conflicts with the keyword class that we use when we define a class-based component. And I just said the word class many, many times. So that's the last time. No more class. All right, so the class, oh, I did it. All right, it's going to say we're going to use call md4, which will set this as a bootstrap column uh, of with four, and we'll give it a list group as well. OK, so just empty ul. It has a class name. Let's go ahead and export this component so that other files can make use of it as well. At the bottom, we'll add export default video list, and then we'll save it. Finally, let's go back over to our index.js file, and at the top, we'll import our video list. Now remember, it's a file that we created, so the from uh, needs to be a path reference. So we'll start in the current directory, dot slash, into components, 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 there we go, video underscore list. Finally, we'll add it into the app's render method, video list, like so. Nice and easy. Now here's a kind of an interesting thought. App is the parent to video list. Video list needs to get access to the videos that are on the app state, right? Our list of videos at any given time inside of app are this dot videos. And video list needs, re needs a reference to that, needs that list of videos. So basically we need to pass some data from the parent component, app, into the child component, video list. As you might imagine, React has this covered for this use case. Passing data from the parent component app to the child component video list is really quite straightforward. We pass a list of videos just by defining a property on the JSX, JSX tag. So we'll say videos equals, and then we're going to make reference to a JavaScript variable. So we're going to use curly braces. We'll say this.state.videos. Passing data like this is referred to as passing props in React. The data that we're passing from app to video list videos is referred to as a prop. So we're passing prop videos to video list. Anytime that app re-renders, like when we you know, set state on the component, video list will get the new list of videos as well. When we use a functional component, 
this props object will arrive as an argument to the function. So those props will arrive as an object called props. And you can imagine that in here, we would then have, say, like const videos equals props.videos. And this would be an array of videos. OK, let's give this a shot and see if it's working. Uh, in our browser, or excuse me, in video list, I'm just going to go ahead and add a curly brace. And we'll say props.videos.length. So we're going to say any video array that, videos array that gets passed in here, we're just going to print the length out. So I'm going to go ahead and save both components. Let's flip over and refresh. And you'll see that we got five here. So that means that we successfully fetched five videos and passed that list of five videos down into video list. Now if you refresh the page, you'll notice that for just half a second, you see the zero in there. I don't know if you can see it, but it basically it's zero at just you know, the barest half second, and then it turns into five. So why is that? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We initialize our state to this.state.videos to an empty array, right? And then we kick off our search. The search is not an instantaneous operation. It's a network request. It takes like some amount of time, you know, a or an arbitrary amount of time. We don't really know how long it's going to take at all because it's a network request. In between the time that it takes the first render of the component to fetching this data and setting it on our state, that could be something like, say, 200 milliseconds. And during that time, the length of videos is equal to zero. So that's why we see zero for half a second. And then the request completes, and we get our list of five videos. OK, so one quick thing to mention. In a functional component, the props object is an argument. In a class object, excuse me, a class-based component, props are available anywhere in any method we define as this.props. So we could say, like, in our render method, we can say this.props if our app was being passed some component or some properties by, its, by some you know, imaginary parent component. So it's very important that you know, whenever we uh, refactor a component from being a function-based component to a class-based component, we would need to go through and update all of our references from just props to this.props. So just something to keep in mind when doing that refactor. OK, so now that we're successfully communicating from index down into video list, let's continue in the next section.